The real reason they hate it is that they know there's antiviral properties in it, but no one's going to make any money off of it. What if I told you there might be something out there that people could walk around with the confidence and the belief that they might have a fighting chance against the Fauci Chinese coronavirus? Now, for Media Matters watching at home, just making sure you have your props and your visuals. Just understand exactly all this. Can they see it? Now you can see it? That's right. And this is a box of ivermectin. You can see that's Yeah, you got, you got that? I got hydroxychloroquine here. Daniel Horowitz, who's one of the smartest people on the planet. He's phenomenal. We should have him back on our show soon. He writes this story, which is so important, just shows how all of you are being lied to by the activist press. The unmistakable ivermectin miracle in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Let's link the story on charliekirk.com if people want to see it. I'm going to read verbatim a lot of this piece because it's that good. And it's just so shocking how the people that we put in charge of our health authorities are refusing to cover this. Uttar Pradesh might sound obscure to most Americans, but it is the most populated state in India, with urban areas that rival the most densely populated cities in the United States, yet, miraculously, despite housing a population of 240 million people, this northern state in India has only been averaging 24 cases of the virus and 0 to 2 deaths per day in recent months. Despite its size... Roughly 73% of the U.S. population, it ranked dead last in cases per capita last week among India's 36 states. So what gives? Has India, has Uttar Pradesh done a mass vaccine strategy? Has Uttar Pradesh shut down schools? Has Uttar Pradesh shut down nightclubs? Has Uttar Pradesh shut down bars? Has Uttar Pradesh mandated masks? Well, the answer, according to Daniel Horowitz, is in the 10-letter I word that you are not allowed to mention on social media. So we saying it right now on YouTube, we're taking a risk. Ivermectin. Evidently, the global media junta doesn't like the over 60 studies vouching for the efficacy of ivermectin against SARS-CoV-2, the Fauci Chinese coronavirus, especially when used early. But there is something better than a study pure reality of lived experience. Last year, the northern state of Uttar Pradesh began dispensing ivermectin liberally and encouraging people to take it early on and even prophylactically. As Trial Site News reported earlier this year, quote, by the end of 2020, Uttar Pradesh, which distributed free ivermectin for home care, had the second lowest fatality rate in India. At 0.26 per 100,000 residents. To give you an idea how low that is, that's how low the childhood mortality rate for COVID is. They were able to do in a country that is a third world country. Did you know, before I go any further, in India, they have 300 million people without toilets. And they're able to do this with COVID. Only the state of Bihar, with 128 million residents, was lower. And it, too, recommends ivermectin. As you can see, COVID has been dead, effectively dead in Uttar Pradesh, with the exception of a very brief six-week spike in early spring. Uttar Pradesh likely would have been the first world experiment of what a given area would have looked like had they been given ivermectin from day one before a wave hit. The piece continues to say that in Uttar Pradesh, did you know that only 4.5% of people are vaccinated in Uttar Pradesh? So India has decided not to do a mass vaccination strategy. Why is it that we're not talking? Is India more populated than China? I think, no, I think China has more people. Why is it that we're not talking about the second most populated country in the world? Remember when all of a sudden they said, oh, COVID is coming for India. Watch out. How did they turn the corner? Why is it that India has just been cast aside? And why is it that our health officials never look to other countries for instruction? Israel is a mess. Fourth booster shot. Shutting down the country. Masks everywhere. India? They're doing just fine. And India is dramatically poorer than Israel. It's not the quality of health care. It's not even the diet or dare I say even obesity. No, no, no. Uttar Pradesh decided to liberally and generously distribute this. 
the thing you're not allowed to hear about. And even I could tell you this, in our own personal circle, someone who's just been fighting the Fauci virus took some ivermectin. And what do you know? Now, I'm not saying it's because of that. I'm just saying something to think about. So why? Why do they not want you to hear about this I word? Well, because the I word is cheap. And in the next segment, I'm going to tell you that Merck, they're already developing a carbon copy of ivermectin, but they want to get the money out of it. You see, the American ruling class, it's even worse than greed. They're willing to have people die and not have the information just so they can make a buck. Daniel Horowitz piece here. Charlie Kirk here, guys. You can email us your thoughts, freedom at charliekirk.com. Then I want to get to this email from Rachel. Ivermectin was regarded as a wonder drug responsible for virtually eradicating river blindness in Africa. Given Ivermectin's robust antiviral and anti-inflammatory mechanisms of action, Uttar Pradesh is a living testament that it could have been used to wipe COVID off the map as well. Sadly, the Western world would rather bankrupt us and cause more deaths for politically driven solutions that don't work and then cede back to the people the control they've established. Perhaps there's a lot we can learn from the third world, for now we are seeing the growth of the fourth world mentality that is much more destructive than the third world. That is Daniel Horowitz, one of the smartest people on the planet. The unmistakable ivermectin miracle in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh we are going to link through to it at charliekirk.com and give him the attribution he needs. But the problem, and again, I'm not going to, I'm not telling you to go take ivermectin, okay? I'm not telling you not to take it. I'm making available the data. Now, I do want to say this, though, because it's very important. Some people say, well, go talk to your doctor. Yeah, I hope you have a good doctor, though, because there's some really bad doctors out there. Awful doctors. Just because someone's a doctor doesn't mean they're going to do a good job. Make sure you know the doctor's telling you the truth, that they're not just being a dogmatic automaton. I just had to fire a doctor recently here where he said, well, if you're not vaccinated, you have to be tested and all this. I said, listen, I'm not going through this COVID cast system to get a physical. Threw him out of my life. Found an another doctor, great guy, who I've known for a while, and we're doing very well. Rachel emails us freedom at charliekirk.com. This is very important. She says, hey, Charlie, love your show and love what you're doing for this country. I wanted to let you know about my experience about ivermectin. I have a doctor who is willing to prescribe it as a prophylactic as well as a treatment. Well, you have a good doctor. I just got an email from her two weeks ago saying that the FDA is mandating them to stop prescribing ivermectin. When I go to pick up my refill of my ivermectin, I had to speak with a pharmacist. He informed me this happens to be through Walgreens, that Walgreens will no longer be filling ivermectin because the FDA is saying that the side effects are bad and that the dosage for humans has not been documented well enough. Now, I fully believe that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine could be ways to prevent COVID. Oh, by the way, for a full day supply, five day supply of ivermectin, the price is $140, which is super high compared to everywhere else outside the United States. That is true. So now the FDA has stepped in, not to only block doctors, but also pharmacists from filling prescriptions, even though doctors are willing to prescribe it. I feel like now this drug is going to be get, going to the black market or something. Oh, yes. Just so you know, ivermectin will be heavy, much, much more heavily regulated than cocaine and heroin. If you, if you have any suggestions on how to get ivermectin, please let me know. But it's also something to do a little more digging on. I've used America frontline doctors for hydroxychloroquine, but it seems they're getting backed up as well. Well, look, let me just say this. Anything the FDA says needs to be taken with a grain of salt. The FDA, they did a deal with the Sackler family to basically legalize oxycontin or oxycotin that killed tens of thousands of people across the country, and the FDA was in on it. So don't give me this whole thing about the FDA knows what's best for you, but what does the NIH say? What's amazing is if you go to the NIH website, which is our own government, they haven't taken these down, interestingly, and we've talked about this before. NIH, ivermectin, a multifaceted drug 
of Nobel Prize honored distinction with indicated efficacy against a new global scourge. That's the NIH website. NIH. NIH says that National Institute of Health, ivermectin can have antiviral action. It stops viral replication. Ivermectin works when distributed. Extremely safe. This is the NIH website. I'm reading straight from the NIH website. NIH. Ivermectin in India. India. WHO white paper. Over 60 peer-reviewed white papers showing that ivermectin could be helpful. Is, can you see it? Can you see it now? <laughs> Free your mind, everybody. But the real reason they hate it is that they know there's antiviral properties in it, but no one's going to make any money off of it. At least the big players aren't going to make money off of it. As we said, and we predicted, Merck is going to have trials underway for a daily COVID pill. How convenient. So they say mass inoculation, even though they now changed the definition of vaccine. We have been saying on this program since last April, we need to focus on treatments and treatments and treatments and treatments. But now they're saying, hey, don't take ivermectin. Instead, we're going to go take the copycat of ivermectin. Cut 68. There is a clinical trial starting this week here in the Valley. Mesa researchers say what they're working on could be a game changer in the pandemic. Here's Brittany Thomason. Patients come to this Mesa lab for the trial. If the drug works and the FDA gives it emergency use authorization, the Biden administration says it plans to buy 1.7 million doses of it. Inside this lab, infectious disease doctor Anita Coley researches how these pills could help people. Well, Naprovir is an antiviral that directly impacts this, the replication of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, preventing it from replicating um, and thereby bringing down viral levels in the body. So basically, bringing down viral loads in the body, we know ivermectin does that. Now, someone emailed us, freedom at charliekirk.com, saying, I think I'm going to take some, Charlie, after listening today. I am not telling you guys to take it. I'm not giving you medical advice. Go find a medical professional Professional knows who they're doing. Make sure you have your entire medical history checked out. Make sure you won't have any sort of unintended side effects to these things. For example, 1% of the population that could possibly take hydroxychloroquine might have heart issues because of certain a certain degree of vulnerability there. So but what I'm saying, though, is free your mind. And look what happened with Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan took it. Obviously, it was just fine. So you read the story of Uttar Pradesh. It really makes you think, do they want this to be over? Or is this pandemic a perpetual money supply and power supply? More importantly, a power supply for America's ruling class. Cut 74. This is where we're headed. The Australian premier of New South Wales says millions of unvaccinated Americans will be blacklisted from society. Now, never do they talk about how the vaccine might actually might the vaccine might the vaccine might be contributing to the spread of the virus. I say might three times because that's inconclusive. But we do know that the efficacy is declining dramatically. What are they saying in Australia? If you're not vaccinated, you will not have the freedom that vaccinated people have. Play cut 74. I want to say very clearly uh, that if you're not vaccinated, you will not have the freedom or the freedoms that vaccinated people have, even when we get to 80% double dose. But don't assume you can sit back uh, and by choice uh, participate in everything. And then Fauci, we played this before, basically says you should not be able to get on an airplane if you're not vaccinated. Now, do you know that over 100 million people have already had the virus? You know what the best vaccine is? Natural immunity. Why are we not talking about natural immunity? And also, while we're at it, why is no one talking about monoclonal antibodies? Monoclonal antibodies could be the game changer, which is that you... I have the I have the definition here. It's it's white cell it's white blood cell treatment infusion basically, right? Is that the layman term of it? Cut six. I would support that if you want to get on a plane and travel with other people, that you should be vaccinated. When you hear us say, should you mandate vaccination for children to be able to attend school? Some people say, oh my goodness, that would be terrible to do that. 
But we already do that and have been doing that for decades and decades. And the smear merchants who run the media, they can't even get their narrative straight for even a couple months. I want to go 56, then I want to go 59, and then 60, and then 61 if we can. So Tucker Carlson asks the question. He says, wait a second. The political class is really upset about Nicki Minaj's tweet. Is that cut 56 we have, or is it kind of out of order? Yeah, play cut 56. First of all, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs has no statutory authority over Auburn. Yeah, that, that's why I asked. Okay, so we'll go to, how about this one, cut 60. I'm pretty confident that's the one. Nope, that's not it either. That's okay. We'll reorganize all the clips and we'll get back to this. I'm trying to find the one where Tucker reacts. First, Joy reads skepticism about the vaccine and then Tucker's response to it. So however we have to get that one. I think that might be Joy Reed's wise skepticism one. The point is this, is that the media was very skeptical about the vaccine last fall. And all of a sudden they're in favor of it, smearing anyone who gets in the way of it. Why that would be? I don't know. Now, being skeptical about something is obviously you're right. Here's the tape here. Play tape. But it's not anything to do with the physical effect of the vaccine that makes our political class mad. It's the last part of Nicki Minaj's tweet that enrages them. The part where she says you should prey on it, make the decision yourself like a free human being and, quote, don't be bullied. Play next cut of Joy Reid, who's went after Nicki Minaj aggressively. Play tape. And people like Nicki Minaj, I have to say this. You have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers. Okay, I have 2 million followers. You have 22 million followers on Twitter. For you to use your platform to encourage our community to not protect themselves and save their lives, my God, sister, you could do better than that. For you to use your platform to put people in the position of dying from a disease they don't have to die from, oh my God, as a fan, as a hip hop fan, as somebody who is your fan, I'm so sad that you did that. So sad that you did that, sister. Oh my God. And then Tucker responds to her. You gotta love that. <laughs> Lady from Denver who went to Harvard, fake urban accent. She sounds like Obama's sister. But the most amusing part is that woman's position on vaccines, which is how to put it, changed a little bit from a year ago. And Joy Reid used to say that we need to be vaccine skeptic. We're going to keep going into that. All right, play tape. We just don't know it, uh, how effective or what the adverse events will be. Yeah. We'll have a better idea in December. Every vaccine takes t t 15, 20 years. Um, so for us yeah. to just yeah. wrap this through less than a year, um, I, I'm not I'm not surprised by the public's skepticism, to be honest, Joy. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're wise. It's, it's wise skepticism. They're wise. It's wise skepticism. It takes 15 to 20 years. If you don't take the vaccine, you're a racist. Stand up!